Malaysia, a country of cultural mixes, celebrates the largest cross-section of prevailing East Asian cultures in the world. Offering variety as its primary thrust, it seems multi is the prefix that often attaches itself to every description of Malaysia. A multicultural, multi-ethnic, multilingual heritage with a multifaceted economy. In the last five decades, it has multiplied expeditiously to rise as a formidable Asian force. Here, there is growth all around, and where else can we see it best than in the country's economic capital, Kuala Lumpur? Kuala Lumpur, or KL, is the epicenter that pulses with economic activity in peninsular Malaysia and is the symbol of development in the country. Literally translated as a muddy estuary, its value today has long superseded any initial physical impressions it once had. With building upon building taking over the skyline, KL prides itself as Malaysia's most advanced city. KL's 2,793 square kilometers houses more than 7.2 million residents that contribute to its rapidly growing urbanization. With its world-class airport, it is no wonder this global city receives an estimated 9.11 million visitors a year, raking in more than 40.8% of the total tourism arrivals of the entire country. With all these people zipping through the city, where do all of them go? For starters, explore its architecture. If there is one thing that Malaysia's cultural exchanges have influenced, it is the city's stunning design. From Merdeka Square to the Petronas Twin Towers, the city is a patchwork of varied architectural influences. From its colonial influences to Chinese, Neo-Moorish and Mughal architecture, each style speaks of a history. They can be modern or postmodern or a bewildering mix of both. But even to an untrained eye, the effort placed in every detail can be appreciated. Although the rapid growth of construction took shape in the 1970s, Clear delineations between construction periods define its buildings. One place arguably holds the most historical and architectural significance in KL, the Merdeka Square, Malaysia's Independence Square. Around it stands one of the oldest structures in KL. The Sultan Abdul Samad building is both Neo-Moorish and Mughal inspired. This turn-of-the-century design were defined by large, tapered windows, exposed wooden beams and half-timbered walls, typical of early architecture in the city. Not far from here are old Chinese apartments, still in their low rise. But all this stands in contrast to the late modernist and postmodernist styles popular around the turn of the century. Perhaps the most famous of which is the stunning central feature in the city center, the Petronas Towers. By its sheer magnitude, the Petronas Towers feel a lot like looking into the future. Two of the tallest twin megastructures in the world, its circular spires rise 452 meters high, dwarfing all other buildings around it. A structural marvel in itself, it was completed in 1998 and stood as the highest building in the world for close to a decade. To experience it, one must reserve a ticket for a guided tour well in advance. But if it's to simply view the towers in all its architectural glory, one need only to take a step back. Well, several steps back, in fact. Some of the best places to take pictures in aren't in front of the towers. Instead, side streets and empty parking lots have become famous with tourists framing the perfect picture. Coming up, shopping and dining in KL.
The mall culture in KL has run amok. Shopping is the next best thing to do in KL. Aiming to run up against regional shopping meccas like Bangkok and Hong Kong, the mall culture in KL is rapidly evolving. From KL City Center to the Golden Triangle in downtown Chinatown, along Petaling Street, more commercial developments and entertainment districts are beginning to create a range of experiences for their visitors. One of the most prominent is the Golden Triangle. Considered by many as the center of shopping and entertainment in the city, it spans from Jalan Imbi and Jalan Bukit Bintang through Jalan Sultan Ismail. These streets form the border enclosing what they believe is the magnetic draw of this shopping district. Visited by thousands of people every day, it is not uncommon to see new malls springing up. Often, these are anchored to international brands, aiming to draw the region's jet-setting shopaholics. One of the newest malls in KL is Fahrenheit 88, a stunning shopping center with lucky condominium residents living right behind it. Its grand opening alone created a frenzy of big names that graced the Esplanade. Further away from the bustling center is Petaling Jaya in the state of Selangor. Its short distance from KL can often confuse people as to where the border between federal territory and the state of Selangor lies. That said, what is clear is the development toward townships, centering on shopping facilities in and around KL. For the people behind the Curve Shopping Mall, what can be better than a place you can live in and explore at the same time? Surrounded by condominiums and hotels, many people who come here live just a few steps away. The first pedestrian shopping mall in Malaysia, its open-air design encourages people to enjoy a stroll while enjoying all the comforts and luxury they need. Inside, discover over 180 retail outlets and more than 50 restaurants for endless shopping selections. To push this trend even further, KL hosts citywide sales promos, like the MYES, or Malaysia Year End Sale, to encourage more people to explore KL. Coming up, what's in and around the city? For those in it to really get a sampling of KL's multicultural experience, then it's time to get off the main roads and hit the side streets. To access these places, hit the lost button and ride the trains through the city. Chow Kit Food Market along the Chow Kit Road is an open-air wet and dry market and lies right along one of the city's main lines. It's also a sub-district in Kuala Lumpur and is the largest market in KL. Here, fresh produce, meats, textiles and a host of exotic ingredients await. The market is open daily from 9 to 5, but at the end of the day, the stalls transform into night markets centered on touristy knickknacks and fashion. From the tempoyak, or fermented durian, to the tudong, or Muslim headdress worn by women. It's not just the products that are of interest, but also the chance to gain a varied cultural experience. For more of this, head to Jalan Masjid, India, the center of the Indian community in KL. One of the oldest districts in the city, Little India as it is known, remains at the very heart of Indian Malayan culture. One of the oldest parts of the city, Little India, has been around for over a century and was once a center of trade. Today, shopping stalls and restaurants line the streets. One of the most popular places to dine in is at the Sitaram Family Curry House. Admittedly, from the outside, it looks like any other open cafeteria. But this award-winning restaurant serves a rich blend of Indian dishes enjoyed the Malay way. The favorite of many are their lamb stews and their daily serving of spicy vegetables. More than the food, it is the experience that it offers that makes it a favorite across cultures. 
Serving their food on a banana leaf, it is one of the few places that lets you enjoy Indian food in all its traditional glory. Dig into the food and eat every spicy morsel with gusto. And if it's not filling enough, then a bite of their curious snacks will surely do the trick. From curry puffs to an assortment of puddings and fried delicacies, even after lunch, there's a reason to hang around. If there is one culinary experience one can expect from Malaysia, it is the profusion of great dining choices and their general appreciation for street food. Mamak stalls, as locals call them, are roadside establishments serving a host of inexpensive homegrown Malay dishes. Often run as a family business, each serve up their own version of classic Malay dishes, from roti to tetarik to nasi goreng and meat goreng. Mamak stalls are modified vans that allow the owners the freedom of packing up and traveling from one center to the next. Jalan Alor in KL is a street near Jalan Bukit Bintang, one of the busiest shopping malls in KL. Just two blocks down from Fahrenheit 88 in the Golden Triangle, it is hard to miss the steaming hot pots of Tom Yan along the street. Open mostly from late lunch till early morning, eating and drinking al fresco gives you a deep sense of local Malaysian leisure. But for a simple yet award-winning take on a favorite mamak dish, then head to Andy Gimuk Fam at the restaurant Jamal Mohammed in Pataling, Jaya District. The small Mamak Center stall in the middle of a suburban area serves what many believe to be the best cha koi tiao or stir-fried rice cake strips, a noodle dish resembling a yaki udon but uses flat strips of rice noodle. It is cooked in a medley of decadent ingredients. The dish was traditionally served to laborers but over the years has been elevated to the hearts of many looking for a delicious, no-frills, quick bite. For a lavish dining experience that contrasts the chaos of the mamak stalls, head to the romantic hideaway in the suburbs of Ampang. Nestled in the quietest part of the district is the Tamarind Springs, the right mix of fine dining against the sprawling decadence of a tropical forest reserve. The restaurant serves an exotic blend of Indo-Chinese cuisine. It's a relaxing refuge for both mind and palate. Dine on Cambodian-style baked mussels drizzled with a light curry sauce or savor the refreshing Laotian watermelon salad or get a kick out of the spicy Vietnamese stir-fried lamb in mint and chili. And while you're there, explore its stone pathways or get lost in its wooden trails, all surrounded by lush vegetation, where the warm climate of KL is tempered by the trees. Up next, going back to KL's roots, getting out to go in. If there is one place that continues to keep KL's swiftly transforming cityscape rooted to its past, it is Kampung Baru. A village in the heart of the city, this kilometer-wide tract of land is a constant reminder of KL's humble beginnings. A place that holds both political and historical relevance, the Kampung Baru Reserve Settlement was recorded in the 1900s by the British with the intention of preserving Malay culture and lifestyle as the rest of the city evolved. To this day, most of the families in the village continue to uphold this amidst pressures from the rising value of their land. It's a refreshing place to visit as the community staunchly observes its many Malay traditions. From its homes, to its food, to the life of its residents, Kampung Baru offers more than a peek into a simpler KL life. But to know more about KL's cultural past, 
Perhaps it will help to take a drive out of the city and head to Sungai Haju Dorani Homestay in Sabak Bernam. Found in the province of Selangor, it's a farming community that provides a hands-on experience into the life and culture that's preceded the KL we know today. Taking pride in simple country life, the 30 or so families who participate in the homestay program welcome you into their life and livelihood. From its greeting tradition using kompang drums, they sound out the beat that draws you away from KL's pumped up living. Guides walk guests through the paddy fields, teaching skills that provide an experiential stroll through Malay values. Under the warm tropical sun, catch ikan keli, the local catfish, with your bare hands. The trick, guides say, is to be patient and grab the fish by the head, showing no fear and holding it with a firm, fearless confidence in one's self. Right after this, head to the paddy fields to pound rice, where you can learn about the merits of enjoying the simple beat of teamwork and the humility of learning. But going home would be incomplete without batik making lessons. Batik is a kind of decorative cloth drawn from a traditional method of creating patterns using wax to form images and dye to color them. On a suspended piece of cloth, patterns found in nature are drawn. Tutors will walk you through the many styles of coloring before sending you home with your very own work of art. A tradition popular in many Javanese cultures, it's an art form that takes years to master. But nothing seems more universal in connecting with another culture than by baking bread. Make your very own baulu or Malaysian pound cake. Or take a seat and enjoy a simple lunch as they share stories about their life hopefully making lasting friendships along the way. Yet another place out of the city that offers an interesting perspective on KL and the rest of Malaysia is in Bukit Malawati. The home of Fort Altensborg Lighthouse that guided ships along the Malacca coast. It is also the home of the silver-leafed monkey Malaysia is one of the world's most naturally diverse countries in the world, home to a host of unique animal and plant life. Many come here just to have close contact with its wildlife. And to cap the day, head to the nearby town of Pasir Penambang, still in Kuala Selangor. Following the banks of the Selangor River, its host of seafood restaurants is a must visit. Eat at places like the Kuan Hua Seafood Resto. A rest stop for many tourists, it is also a local favorite, serving chili crabs and buttered prawns, best eaten with your hands. Village life in KL takes another spin as we crack the last chapter of the KL Connection. From its architecture to its hand-painted batik, arts and crafts hold a high value in Malaysian culture, thus creating a need for places like the complex craft. Just minutes from the Golden Triangle, this huge facility houses different forms of Malaysian crafts and is home to a colony of artists who continue to nourish the tradition. Here, visitors and students alike can learn and own a piece of Malaysian artistry. From textiles to ceramics, metal crafts and woven products, it provides a venue to take part and understand the production processes involved. Among those shown are pottery making, intricate wood carving, silver craft, 
weaving the songket cloth and stamping batik patterns. It's also a venue for art fests and events. Their amphitheater and art gallery often play host to expos throughout the year. In contrast to this is the Ai City, located in the city of Shah Alam. It is part of Malaysia's greater multimedia super corridor. It was conceptualized in the late 90s and is believed to lead Malaysia into the future. At its infancy, this development is intended to provide a space for IT research and technological industries. Already, many regional offices have moved here and it has drawn thousands of people each year looking to see its magnificent lights display. Kuala Lumpur, it is certainly more than a city. It is also an inspired mix of cultures and traditions waiting to be experienced. Does it get faster and faster? Yeah. I think I'll sing this while doing the rice thing. Okay. 